Hi there myopia friends, welcome to my first myopia musings. I'm at home, that's my beautiful view from the balcony and I should be working on my PhD but I'm enjoying some outdoor time uh, but not really ever stopping thinking about myopia. So for my first myopia musings I thought it would be good to talk about the evidence base for atropine and is atropine actually better than ortho-K? So let's get stuck into it. So let's talk about three key atropine studies. First of all was the Adam 1% study, which occurred about 11 years ago, and it found that compared to a placebo, that 1% atropine showed a very impressive myopia control effect, around 80%. Then there was the Adam 2 study, which was published in 2012. And again, it showed a similar trend that the higher the concentration of atropine, the better the myopia control effect. Now when we had a look at the overall myopia control effects of these particular concentrations over a two year period, the 1% showed about 80%, whereas the lower concentrations had reducing amounts of efficacy. Now the newest study, the one that we're all quoting and the one that we're all interested in is the ADAM2 study. This was published in um, 2016 and it was a five year study. First of all, what they did is they took the children who were involved in the ADAM2 study and then after two years of treatment, they discontinued them for a year. They measured the children who progressed by at least half a diopter every year. And what they found is that the children who were on the higher concentrations actually had a greater rebound effect. Whereas the children on the lower concentration on the 0.01% had a smaller rebound effect. So after this one year washout period, they started all of these progressors again on 0.01%. And what they found is that after another two years of treatment, so a five year follow up in total, the children who had been on 0.01% that whole time, except for the washout for one year, actually had the lowest progression rate. So there isn't actually any evidence to say we should start at a higher atropine dosage and drop down to a lower one, because the children who are on the lower dose of atropine the whole entire time had the lower overall progression. Now, the thing that's really important is avoidance of high myopia and all of the attendant pathologies with that. And what the authors found is that children who ended up with myopia greater than eight diopters in both eyes over the period of the study, there was the lowest amount of those in the 0.01%. And when we look at an overall myopia control rate, the authors say that the control effect for 0.01% is around 50%. Now they didn't have a control group throughout this time. We only had a control group in the first study, so it's around 50%. So the treatment summary from this atropine study was that atropine 0.01% is effective in children aged 6 to 12 years with documented myopia progression of at least half a doctor in the prior year. The treatment should be for two years because they actually found that the second year of treatment was more effective. If the progression is a uh, quarter diopter or less in that second year, and especially if the children are older, then atropine could be stopped. If an increase in myopia occurs at that point, then you can restart the treatment. And if the child is still progressing by a quarter to three quarters of a diopter in that second year of treatment, which would indicate a reduced response, the suggestion of the authors was to continue treatment for longer than two years. Now, another paper looked at risk factors for reduced response, and this was in fact younger age, higher baseline myopia and two myopic parents. So perhaps these are the children that we're looking at combined treatments for, although we don't actually have any studies yet on combining treatments. So those results are pretty impressive, but is atropine actually better than ortho-K for myopia control? This paper published last year compared 16 different interventions for myopia control. And when it had a look at the efficacy for reduction in axial length, we found that high dose atropine had the highest, it goes down to the lower doses as we've just talked about, have a look at ortho-K here. It's actually quite similar to the low-dose atropine. And next one is peripheral defocus modifying contact lenses, parenzepine, which isn't commercially available, prismatic bifocal spectacle lenses and bifocal spectacle lenses. We've got modifying spectacle lenses, progressive spectacle lenses. And then the things that don't really work are our single vision soft contact lenses, our rigid contact lenses, under correction, which absolutely doesn't work, and then our reference point is single vision spectacle lenses. So it might be that talking about percentage controls for myopia becomes outdated, because there's lots of different reasons why studies can have different percentage outcomes, and it very much depends on the control group and the type of the study. The authors of the 16 intervention study actually had a look at treatments by whether they were ineffective, weak, moderate, or strong. And what I think is really interesting here is that if we group low-dose atropine, parenzepine, peripheral defocus modifying contact lenses and ortho-K, these are actually all falling within the moderate group. Basil the very serious hound says we can't quite say atropine is better than ortho-K. Basil really doesn't care about my AP control. Please shoot me some comments or suggestions and thanks very much for listening. Thanks Baz.
Thanks for not very much, actually.